Hello, Mark Crossfield here. More live lessons, golf lessons coming at you. We've got Tony came for a lesson that he won in a charity auction, actually, which was quite good fun for Help the Heroes. I think it was on the Golf Monthly Forum. So here's Tony's live lesson. A couple of interesting points, I think, for you guys to pick out of this. He comes wanting to improve his driver. The lesson switches quite quickly, as you'll see. Um, and maybe not only did I help him improve his technique, but we helped him maybe understand his game slightly differently with the help of my GC2 HMT launch monitor um, and just by talking to him. So let's show you the live lesson. Let's get stuck in. So Tony came and he wanted to work on his driver. He said it was his weakest point. Um, so I got him to hit seven drivers, which he hit pretty well. And I looked at his angles and his numbers, um, which were pretty good. They were quite reliable. Um, and he was hitting target quite a lot compared to maybe some people who disperse their driver quite violently in kind of one direction or even a couple. He was able to hit target within reason, considering how far it was going, quite a lot. So I got him to hit some irons. Um, and we started to see a bigger problem. Now, Tony thought his irons were really good, and his irons were really good, because if we look at his numbers, his irons are like zero, zero path. You know, he's pretty, he's going to be accurate. Um, but he did slip into the conversation just on passing when I talked about like equipment and what have you, that he doesn't hit anything more than a seven iron. So he stops, he has a six iron in his bag, doesn't really hit it, doesn't carry a five iron. So when we looked deeper, we could see dynamic loft presented with his irons was very low. Uh, spin numbers were quite low as well, so I can imagine him not really hitting as many greens in regulation as he thinks he does. Uh, listen to the conversation. Right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what you do. Right. And what I need you to do for me um, while we talk about these numbers is I want you to try and not fix any of them in your head. Now I say this statement with every lesson, yep. but no one does it, they all ignore me. But we say it, so when I put my hand up in a minute when you try and fix them in your head, you'll relate to this sentence, this this set, this paragraph that we've just done. You'll go, oh, okay, yeah, stop, I'll stop doing that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you, or I'm going to try and demonstrate to you how your club is hitting the ball. And I want you just to try and visualise how club is at impact, so it, so it can relate to what you think you're doing at impact. Okay. So if the face happens to be, say, like delivered massive toe down, as I'm telling people their face is delivered toe down, you can see them in the head go, how oh, am I going to fix that? I'll fix it. Don't worry about that. We'll do that. Don't try and fix it, because often the fixes aren't what you think they are. <laughs> so they stop you understanding. With me? Mm -hmm. So driver, which is the first club you hit, which is the one you've come and you want to work on. Yeah. Um, you're hitting five up. Okay. So that means the club is travelling five degrees upwards as it hits the ball. Which is very good. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's a lot up, but it has to be for what you're doing. Um, you're swinging five into out, four point eight into out. Right. Happy with terms of into out yep, and out yep. to in. Uh, and then on average, your face is point two of a degree closed to that five. Right. Okay, which if the strike is in the right place, you're going to hit plenty of draws. You've got one, two, three, four minus faces to pass, and you've got one, two, three plus faces to pass. The so subject of strike, you're going to draw it more than you're going to block it, but you could block the odd one of these. So certainly seven to the right, face two open to that seven, there's a good chance that's going to go to the right if you middle it. If you don't, then it'll override these numbers. Um, if you look at the flight of your driver, which is the blue dots, there, um, it's a slight overdraw, it's pretty good, um, it, it's pretty good, dispersion. Uh, if you look at the yellow dots, They're not far off the same dispersion of your driver. They are tighter, obviously, bearing the, the yeah. miss hit. Yeah. Um, but I would see more drop shots from those irons than I would those drives, yeah. personally, mm -hmm. from that batch of shots. Because the driver, the dispersion is not too bad, and the, the fairways are obviously wide, it 
probably is going to be on the fairway in some way, shape or form. Agree. But then the greens and regulation afterwards. I would say your greens and regulations wouldn't be as good as your fairway. No, because yeah. my short game is where it keeps me to my low handicap. Yeah. But um, you're but it's interesting you're coming in saying you want to improve your driver. Because I've never had a lesson with my driver, I haven't hit my driver for probably three years, mm. you know, and I've only started hitting it in the last couple of months. If we look at your iron then, your iron you swing four down. Yeah, clo is that closed? Because no, sorry, that's up and down. So four right, down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, four down. So, so where you were four yeah. or five up yeah. with your driver on a tee hitting up, right, yeah. the iron right. you'll fall down, yeah. okay? Which is not bad at all. Okay. It's slightly heavy down, but it's good. Yeah. Uh, you swing the path at zero. Okay, so. Straight. Yeah. You have the face at zero. Just square. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The lie is nearly three degrees toed down. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got fitted for these and they are a green dot, which is three down. Is that flatter, is it? Their green is flatter, is it? Flatter to the ground, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So the toe, that's more upright and the lie is green. Exactly, yeah. Is that what you call it? Yeah. I'm getting confused. Green is more upright or flatter? Well, I would say flatter. But what do you mean, as in? As in toed down. So, oh, so it's toed down. Yeah. Well, bring up a green. ping chart. I don't know where green is. So is ping ab is green above black or below black? No. Hopefully. Okay. But you're hitting three degrees toed down. Okay. Would that be just on the setup of the club itself? That's dynamic delivery. Right. So I'm not doing that. The club's doing that itself. Yes and no. Yeah, hopefully, because that's what it's meant to do, is it? Well, that should be zero. Right, okay. But let me show you a visual of it, look. There's 2.8 toe down. Oh, I see, yes. Yes, I see. So your handle's mean. higher. Okay. Which means, in theory, the club should be more upright than this. Okay, and what not flat effect up. would that have on the, sh the shape, or...? Higher hands are pretty good for getting out the neck shots oh. of your strike pattern. It's a common uh, pattern I see when people deliver a higher handle. Right. So they're putting the toe in the ground like you are. Yeah. Pretty good picking out the neck. Um, the other thing that you do, which is, in my opinion, really going to punish you, which is why you don't hit a six very often, like you said, you stop at a seven iron, yeah. is you only present 19 degrees of dynamic loft with this club, six iron. You should be presenting with GC2 HMT, which measures at a different point to Trackman. It should be measuring, I mean, I would like to see it around 25, 27. Explain that to me. So you mentioned your shots don't go very high. Yeah. What's one of the influences of a shot going high or low? Closed cup face. Uh, no, but that's a common answer. Yeah. Uh, a, a face that is twisted to the left could reduce loft yeah. and can reduce loft. Uh, if you present, if I hit your six iron and I go and present 25 degrees of dynamic loft to your 19 and all my other numbers are exactly the same as yours and we strike it exactly the same, who's in it higher? You. Yeah. So you present 19 degrees of dynamic loft, that's not much loft. How would I present more? Uh, you're trying to fix again. Right, okay. <laughs> we'll, do <that>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, there are reasons why you don't. I just want you to understand that you don't hit the ball very high, not because of some magical fairy dust, it's because right. you don't present much loft. Right, I thought it was It doesn't was matter that it's got a six iron written on the bottom. No. If you don't present a dynamic loft equivalent to a six iron going in a certain height, no. it'll go like a five iron yeah. or a four iron. My probably four iron would present that. Yeah, but, I mean, that's why sometimes I pull it to the left because I feel that I'm closing the club face. Obviously, I'm not because we, we say they're pretty neutral. Yeah, I don't. That to me is presenting. Closed. It's probably square, but it, to me, it's presenting it closed to the to the course or, or my target line. So do you mean left, closed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That club face is not pointing left. No. The club face my... is pointing at the target. You have got a lot of handle lean, so your handle's a long way forward, which is taking all this loft off. Right. Okay. So, so do you mean closed as in less loft, or do you mean closed as in left? As in left yeah. In my okay. Eye. Yeah, that's fine. So all I'm trying to do is establish what. See, if I start using the words closed and open, and you're using the same words, but they mean different, different thing to things, you to yeah. me, then we're not going down the same path no. ever. No. Um, your face is zero to a zero path, which means on average when you hit the ball, it's 
zero. Square. It's as you would call it square. Um, you have the odd ones which are two degrees close to a path, but that one's there's two degrees close to a path going nearly two right. So that means it's only one degree closed at target, uh, at impact to target. Yeah. It's very small numbers. Yeah, and that's probably why when I miss to the left, it's five or ten yards. It's mm. hardly anything. The problem you're going to have, in my opinion, and yeah. you can choose what you want to work on, you don't present the right loft with your irons, which is why they go low. If you don't present the right dynamic loft with your irons, then trying to get the ball to stop on the green and make birdies it's difficult. and even save pars is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Your driver isn't that bad. It's just not that bad. Mm -hmm. We can work on your driver. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm but not. I would say your iron is worse. That's fine. And this isn't not. This is very common with my lessons because yeah. we measure. People say, oh, I, "I want my driving to render," mm. and then you watch them hit irons into dispersions of 50 yards short, long dispersion, which they don't see on a range because no. it's quite flat. Yeah. So they don't see that ball's coming up 20 yards short. They think it's gone down the neck. Yeah. You know, it's down the nose. Yeah. Um, but that, but obviously the launch model shows us where they see drives kind of dispersing 10 yards left, 20 yards right, and in their mind that's like disaster. Mm. Actually, you probably find them. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily think um, I'm a bad driver. I think you're a really good driver. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think you're going to hit the odd block, which yeah. we can talk about before the day's out, but it's you're going to hit more good drives than you are bad ones. No, that's fine. I would say your iron play is low, okay. um, which will make dry sunny days hard to hold green yeah. par threes with carries difficult um i i think you could improve your iron play and that's where you're gonna i mean you're off six did you say yeah. you're not gonna get to category one with that iron play that easily where that driving get you to category well i could show you pros who drive like that but they won't have irons like that. Irons it is. Let's do it. Definitely. It's always an interesting start to a lesson when you change someone's ideas just within a few shots. Uh, Tony understood and was willing to change straight away. Uh, now, we go, watching this part of the lesson, you can see how I talked about how his grip, his right-hand grip was underneath the club that was making him twist the face, which would have made him produce a leftward impact, or the face would have been pointing left. But what he did, he was um, coordinated enough to push the handle forwards enough to get that face zeroing out to his path, which was zero as well. But it was compromising that loft. So we worked on trying to get his understanding around open, close or twisted faces. Let's check it out. So you have a club face that is twisted because your right hand grip sits underneath the club. Yeah. So your right hand grip gets a bit this way, yeah. which then in turn makes the club want to twist that way, which is what you were talking about a bit at the start. So what you do to get rid of that twist is you push the handle forwards. Right. See what it's doing to the yeah. loft? Yeah, definitely. So it takes the twist out, but it now requires you to hit the ball like you're doing yeah. with a lot less loft. We need you to present more loft, so we need you to take that twist out via the grip and then that sharpening out. Right, okay. Does that make any sense? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. My dad's always told me that I've got to get in my right hand over. Weaker? Uh, weaker than where it is. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Tony, put your grip where you want the grip to be. Okay. So that right hand gets under the club. Yeah. Now what that will do in turn is it will in tend to, and it does for you, it twists the club to the left. So if you twist the club to the left for me, good. Now, you're not allowed to change the grip, you're not allowed to twist the club. If you just lean the handle forwards, can you see how that now is presenting the face back to your zero more? Yeah. But we're losing all the loft. Yeah. And that's exactly how you're training yourself to hit the ball, which is why you stop at a seven eye. Right. What I'm saying, if you come back to your setup position, uh, if you get the right hand more on top, go on a bit more than that, now if that reduces the amount of twist, you can present some loft. Yeah. And instantly we've got some higher flying irons. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Definitely. If you just step away from the ball, let's have a couple of practice swings with that grip. Because I imagine it feels pretty horrendous. It feels funny. Right hand could just go a bit more for me, Tony. It's still li okay, it's so over more. Uh, it, you put it in the right place and then you slip it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Keep it there. How hideous does that feel? It feels hideous. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> if it didn't, there would be something yeah. wrong. 
<laughs> yeah. But for, for ever since I've been playing golf five years, yeah. my dad, he doesn't say anything to me. But change your but grip. But he'd go, he'd just go, right hand. Yeah. That's all he'd say. Yeah. Shall Should I have paid him, not me. <laughs> No. <laughs> Shall I hit him? Yeah. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Don't worry if this goes to the right. Okay. There's your loft. There's your height. That's a mock fire. See that? That's a mock fire. Perfect. There you go. It's much higher, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, a better strike as well, Mark. Yeah, it's good. I love that. Okay. So if we look at what's happened there, we're going to go ball flight to start us off. So you've got the yellow irons are your first irons here. Okay. Um, launching at 12.2 degrees with our balls. The last batch here, look at the top ones, which are the blue ones. You're now launching at 12.7. So you've had not a degree of loft, but you're adding a little bit of loft launching higher yeah. okay uh, carrying 126 average to 120 um, with your original so they are averaging a little further mm -hmm. um, but that's not I mean it's more the height really I would want to see now your peak height isn't any high because we've got a misread on the peak height there your highest shot before was 15 yards with your grip with uh, our glass grip there you're getting more teens apart from the two misreads on height there oh that's not that's a misread 15 14 and 16 um, so you're a little higher but there's more to give we need more height yeah um, and you're a little bit more spin as well so a bit more spin will help you stop at the other end <clears throat> a bit higher yeah a bit more spin and you'll uh, you'll get stopping at the other end a little bit a little bit better yeah. um, and with that extra height you get a little bit more distance as you said not always but i think you will yeah i think you're ripping them out there a little low uh if we look again at your deliveries you're you're still one and zeros so very close your path's not moving you're very much in control of path and face uh, it's just the loft that you're struggling to control the most. Mm -hmm. So Tony, just so we're clear, yep. so grip, yep. all the talking, all the numbers, your right hand grip has to change. Yes. Um, right hand grip does what to the loft of the club? Does it help you present with more loft or less loft? More loft. Correct. So your old grip was twisting the club to help you present not a leftward face, because how would you stop the face being left? What would you do to the shaft with your old grip? Lean it forward. Correct. Which then did what to the loft? To loft all... it. Definitely. So your new grip helps you fix loft. Yeah. But if you deliver with the handle forward still, mm. where would the ball go? Left. No. The handle forward oh, forwards, with the new right. grip. Yes, it would go right. Correct. So you need top. to have a second feeling, which is at the bottom doing what? You call it a flip? Yeah. So catching the head up with the hands feeling yeah. a bit more. So it's two things, isn't it? It's grip. Yeah. And flip. Yeah. With all the numbers and talking, that's really all we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And that gives you different height options in shots. And very easy to do. I think so, you're doing it. I see it. Camera's on now, and you've just said it's really easy to do, so this is a pressure yeah. shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great shot. That's higher, isn't it? Yeah. Really good. There you go, 21 degrees aloft, not your highest. We haven't tackled lie, that's another day really. Yeah. Um, you're starting to swing a little bit further left. Yeah, to so swing a bit straighter for me. Yeah, I'll try. That's the cheapest lesson in the world. <coughs> People always, feel like they don't feel like it's worth paying for. You're swinging a bit left. Yeah, which swing is... A bit, yeah, so, try and swing a bit straighter and do it. Yeah. So same grip, same flip but feel like you're swinging out to that target a bit more. Yeah, it's good, a little lower. There you go, look, really good. 22 degrees aloft, uh, and you swung straight only one degree across. Sometimes for people, certainly like you, six handed capper, it's more a case of telling them to just do it correctly. Mm. Stop swinging left, Tony, all right. Yeah. It doesn't need to be hit this position at that position. You're more skilled than you think you are. Mm -hmm. I asked you to swing straight and you swung within one degree to straight. Mm -hmm. I asked you still to try and keep the loft up and you did. 
Really good. Yeah, please. You're there. Let's do it again. So quite an interesting one there, guys. I think a lot of people I see have similar ideas to Tony. I mean, playing off six, we're talking about really fine tuning. He plays off a good handicap, um, making him hit a few straighter drives. Certainly, is something we could work on in the future. But I could really see his irons there going in low, not spinning, not holding greens, um, and not really hitting the amount of greens that a maybe a three handicapper, which is where he'd want to get to, would hit. So from that lower launch, less spinning shot, he's going to come in flatter and just struggle to hold greens. Stopping at a seven iron as well. I mean, that's not common in category one players. When you get below six, that's going to be something that really holds him back. So I think an interesting lesson there. Not only I'm really pleased with how we changed his numbers. You can see we've gone to 23 degrees dynamic loft from starting at 19, which I'm really happy with. Um, last set of shots there was averaging 5.5 five spin. He started at 5.2, so a little bit more spin. Peak height averaging 15 down to his 12 peak height when he came in with his irons. So he's hitting it higher, he's going to land steeper and it's got a little bit more spin on it, which I think will give him a few more, a bit more armory to go out and play and hopefully save a few more shots by hitting greens. His short game's pretty good, he said, so he's going to chip and putt and hold a few putts, make a few birdies. I think his driving could be a bit tighter, but I just don't see it costing the shots, the amount of shots that approach shots will cost him with medium irons. Certainly when he gets to longer, more challenging courses, which if he wants to play category one golf, he will be playing in some events which takes him away from his home course. Let me know what you think guys, press comments down below. Just another example of how I'm using technology to help me and my experience to help golfers play a bit more um, in a way that will hopefully lower their scores. So there's lots of numbers, you know, and people say it's all really technical, but at the end of the day, we changed his grip, we gave him a different understanding of how the face works, and we made him understand that loft, so dynamic loft, the loft you deliver, is something that a good player will be playing with nearly every other shot, lots of shots. They don't, won't be just delivering a standard dynamic loft. They'll be hitting lower ones, higher ones, curving the ball, moving it. They'll be playing golf under trees, over trees, those kind of things. And hopefully Tony there has a few more kind of weapons to get around that course and lower that handicap. Thanks for watching. Post comments down below. Speak to you soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.